The most important, heavily extrapolated and explored of Butler's ideas that are raised in the Dune series is that of machine evolution. It was this concept from his initial letters to the Christchurch Press in the form of Darwin Among the Machines that Butler would later elaborate upon in Erewhon, eventually comprising the majority of the section entitled The Book of the Machines. Butler's satirical discussion of machines superseding humanity by means of Darwin's theory of natural selection is now considered to be the first work that looked at what is today referred to as technological singularity. Humanity's subjugation by machines that have evolved and superseded them due to technological singularity has become a prominent theme in science fiction literature and films alike, the most notable of recent examples being the Wachowski Brothers Matrix trilogy and the Terminator franchise. In Erewhon, it is the idea that Butler presented of a society where most advanced machinery has been destroyed that would greatly influence Frank Herbert. H.G. Wells's novel The War of the Worlds projects elements of social Darwinism into the future and portrays the Martians as a super evolved form of humanity. In fact, the Martians represent Wells' ideas as to the potential future evolution of mankind, one million years down the evolutionary timescale. The Martians are what mankind will eventually become. In Erewhon, Butler takes a similar attitude, but takes Darwin's ideas of evolution and natural selection and applies them to the machinery developed since the Industrial Revolution. The conclusion that the Erewhonians come to is that one day machine evolution will eventually supersede that of human evolution, and mankind will be overtaken by a machine culture and eventually enslaved by it. The result of this hypothesis in Erewhon is that the inhabitants of this seemingly perfect society eventually revolt against complex machinery, blindly destroying such technological items so as to prevent this possible future from occurring. There is no security, to quote his own words, against the ultimate development of mechanical consciousness in the fact of machines possessing little consciousness now. In Erewhon, the three chapters of the Book of the Machines examine this attitude to the destruction of such technology. This philosophy is explained to the novel's protagonist, Higgs, who himself has carried a piece of machinery into Erewhon, namely his watch. Possession of this watch results in Higgs's early arrest shortly after arriving in Erewhon. Butler provides two viewpoints to this presentation of pseudo-Luddite behaviour. The first of these is based entirely on the premise of the evolution and supersedence of machinery over humanity. Mankind's fate in this foreseen future is perceived by the Erewhonians as being not altogether bad, but is nonetheless one of slavery. Their prediction however views this servitude on a par with the human domestication of livestock and pets. They say that although man should become to the machines what the horse and dog are to us, yet he will continue to exist and will probably be better off in a state of domestication under the beneficent rule of the machines than in his present wild condition. Butler's responding argument given by another philosophical writer who remains nameless puts forward the concept that humanity uses machinery in a form of symbiotic mergence with the flesh, that machinery is very much an extension of mankind itself and can be seen as a form of supplementary limb. Because of this the view presented by the philosopher indicates that human civilization and the development of machinery advance hand in hand. As Higgs informs the reader, the author tells him that machines were to be regarded as a part of man's own physical nature, being really nothing but extracorporeal limbs. Man, he said, was a machinate animal. The response that prevails in the Erewhonian society is one of blind preemptive action, where the choice is made to destroy all machines to prevent this possible evolution of machinery beyond that of humanity. Butler's work is very much a product of its times, as is the tendency with most utopian satires, and its attitude towards machinery comes from Butler's amused speculations on applying natural selection to the emerging prevalence of machinery and industrialization in Victorian times. In fact, it is in the Erewhonians' attitudes and blind acceptance that Butler's utopian satire particularly bites, and it is here where we see these themes carried on by Herbert. In Erewhon, the interesting thing is that the philosopher who instructs Higgs on the possibility of a future nightmare for mankind as slaves to the machines 
predicts that an evolution to this state of affairs may not happen for 20,000 years or even 100,000 years. But this, in terms of the evolutionary time scale, is a mere moat compared to the length of time it has taken humanity to evolve. Complex now, but how much simpler and more intelligibly organised may it not become in another 100,000 years, or in 20,000? For man at present believes that his interest lies in that direction. He spends an incalculable amount of labour and time and thought in making machines breed always better and better. It is out of mankind's desire to continually refine and make better the machines that are as Butler saw it, intrinsically linked to our development as a species, that leads to the eventual Butlerian Jihad in June. This event is extrapolated by Frank Herbert along a similar timescale as Butler's prediction of when this technological revolt may occur. Herbert proceeds from the assumption that these machines did evolve in a similar timescale, and then demonstrates humanity's desperate response to machine dominance, the Butlerian Jihad, as an event that changes human society forever, ultimately altering its evolutionary path. The response of the Butlerian Jihad is perhaps quite rational and predictable, but the Imperium of the Dune Universe's subsequent actions appear as irrational as the world of the Erewonians, 